Hey guys, Matt here, and today we're going to be upgrading my Raspberry Pi home automation system as well as cleaning it up because it got kind of messy. This is my Raspberry Pi home automation system. Here I have my IR, I have some remotes, but I'll do a whole nother video on how my home automation system works and all the features of it. Today we're going to focus on upgrading it and cleaning it up because let me take the lid off it's kind of messy and I don't know about you but I don't like messy electronics so the upgrade we're going to be doing to the Raspberry Pi system is we're going to be installing another relay in addition to the relay that I have both of these relays are eight channels so I'll have a total of 16 channels on my Raspberry Pi and we're also going to be installing this remote. Right now it's just wired in there, but it's not doing anything. And this remote controls my charging stuff. So like charging my phone every night. I have just like one power strip and it's all controlled by this. So let's go ahead and take this out and see what we got to work with. Okay guys, so I took the Raspberry Pi out and now I'm going to show you what my plan is to do for this upgrade. And so first thing definitely is I have to get this relay. I was thinking of mounting it like this on top of the other one and then wiring all the wires like that. That's one thing I have to do and then figure out that and wire up all the cables. Then I was also thinking of a better way of mounting this relay down to the bottom because right now it's just sitting on regular scotch tape. And another thing I was thinking of doing is cleaning up these wires because they look kind of messy. Maybe even putting them in sleeves or getting electrical tape and taping them. Also going to clean up these wires and dust this whole thing. As well as figuring out a way to keep the Raspberry Pi straight. And lastly, figure out where to mount this remote control. Also in the back, I'm going to try to try to wire all these cables. I also have some cables that aren't even used. Might figure out maybe I'll get rid of them or tape them somewhere. And more dusting and cleaning. Oh, that wasn't good. And finding a better way to mount the Raspberry Pi because it just fell out. First, I'm going to start by taking apart the Raspberry Pi home automation system by removing the remotes, the relays, and all the cables and seeing where th things are going to go. Also, I am fixing up the cables with electrical tape by taping strands of cables together. After, I'm going to clean up the case with an air can and a Swiffer duster to remove all the dust and dirt. Then finally, I'm going to drill holes in the case to mount the Raspberry Pi. Okay guys, so now I took apart my whole Raspberry Pi, everything is all cleaned up, and all the wires are sorted, drilled the hole after a long period of time, and so now let's go ahead and install everything. So first, I think I'm going to install the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now the Raspberry Pi is installed. And all I have to do is put everything else in. Great, okay. So, next I think I'm going to put in the remote controls. First, this one. OK, 
Okay, so now we're, while we're waiting for that one, let's do the same thing to the other remote. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put the hot glue behind this one. I don't know if it's good to mix hot glue and super glue, but I really don't care. Okay, so now what we have done is we have this remote attached and this remote attached. So next thing I think we're going to do is attach the relays. Okay guys, so now what I have to do is I have to figure out how I'm going to put this card on top of this one. So I have to figure out how to mount these two relays on top of each other so I can have all the inputs flowing in and then all the control wires going in through this. What I was thinking was taking apart a mechanical pencil like that and then it has this nice hollow tube. At first, I was thinking of doing uh, a screw and a nut on the bottom, but I don't have a screw that thin enough and a nut that would fit, and also I don't feel like going to look for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this end off right here, and we're going to cut this tube in half, and we're going to do the same thing to this mechanical pencil, and we're just going to put them in all four corners. Then... We're going to take a nail from Ikea, and you put it through like that. Then I'm going to put a lot of hot glue on this end right here, and then stick it through like that. So that way it stays in one place. If you don't understand now, it's fine. I'll show you when I'm done. One cut right there. Except what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use the big knife for this one. Let's get rid of this little tiny puny knife. Let's bring in the big knife. Because, you know, we got a big cut. So we got to do a big knife. I cut all the pieces with this knife. I'm just kidding. I used my Dremel. And so now what I'm going to do is going to make them as standoffs like that to put the other board on so they're all rised up. And I can connect everything. So first we got to put the nail in through like that. Will it stay? I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. Then I'm going to put some hot glue. Okay, so now that the hot glue is hot, stick it in the tube. Okay, try not to have too much excess and stick it right on like that and that's how it's gonna look okay so now let's go ahead and put the nails through the top one now let's take the hot glue Stick it in. Oh, wait. First, I missed the nail. Here it is. So now let's go ahead and put hot glue in all four corners. Okay, so now let's put the top on with all the nails and see how it looks. And I think that looks good. I think I like that. So let's go ahead and put this inside the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now I'm going to install the relay. I was thinking about installing it right here. And then just having the Raspberry Pi cables coming off like that. 
and I I like that. I think it looks nice. So now let's go ahead and find a place to put this. It's gonna lay here. If not, I can always move it, and I'll let you guys know if I do. Okay, so let's say it goes here. Now we have to cable manage these cables with some black electrical tape. And there we go. So now we just feed it through here. Like that. By the way, this case is custom made by me. I What I did was I drew it in a CAD software and then had my dad cut it out because he works with laser machines. So I designed this whole case. And so all these cable management holes are perfect because now I can stick through the cables. Looks a little bit neater. And uh, overall looks a lot better. Put that there. All right. Next, I think I'm going to change up this tape because I don't like how it looks. I think black electrical tape works better. But the reason I have it like this is because when I stick it in like that, it's exactly in the order of the pins so if I need to quickly change out something I can easily do it from here okay so now let's, I'm gonna go ahead and wire up the whole thing and then we should be done and then we'll move on to the software upgrade Okay, so here we have the two relay cards all stacked nicely on top of each other. And then here we have the ribbon cable or the individual cables which go into the bottom one. I'm not putting it in all the way just because if I want to swap it out, I can. And then here we have the another remote and this is going to control my charging station. Here we have the remote that controls my lights, the Raspberry Pi, and then the remote that controls all my outlets. And I will be looking to find another remote to control three more outlets. So that way I can show you guys how I wired up the remotes. And so you got, if you want to do it yourself, you can. And because I need more outlets in my room to be controlled. And the reason I do outlets instead of manually wiring up um, outlets 120 volts and above to the relays themselves is because I want this whole thing to be low voltage okay so first let's go around to the back and feed all the cables through the front as nicely as we possibly can and this cable goes to the IR sensor which con controls the lights in my room so I'm going to just leave that to the top and figure out what I'm going to do with that later. Put that right there. Alright. So let's go ahead and feed this cable in first. Which will actually no, we'll do that one last because that one goes there. First, let's go ahead and wire up all the outlet cables. Through here. And I have all the cables labeled for the outlets because there's a lot of them. I'll let you guys see that. I have them all labeled. See, it says on one, off three, on all, off all. So that way, when I plug it all back in, it should go on one, off one, on two, off two. So that way it's much easier. And I, in the future, if I want to upgrade again which is what I'll probably be doing, then it's much easier to find w which cable does what. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and feed it through another cable management hole that I made in this back plate. And then we'll flip it around to the front and plug in the cable. 
Okay, for now we'll just put this up here. Move this back. Move that back again. Grab this cable and plug it all in. Now I'm just going ahead and straightening out all the cables so they go nicely into the holes. And this black cable right here, this is ground. So if I touch any one of these cables, it'll activate. So in here, I have jumper cables, so I don't have to put jumper cables on top of this one. So there's not five cables coming off of this one. I just put in jumpers for all the leads that are coming in from the remote. Oh yeah, and another reason why I have remotes is because it is wireless. So I don't have to be dragging cables across my whole room. All it does is automatically turn on and off right from the Raspberry Pi, which is all the way across the room. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Now, the way I plug it into the relays is I have ground here, and then I have the uh, high lead here. So here's on one. I should bring it closer. Yeah, that fits in the camera. And then we plug it in to here. If you guys have any suggestions on what I should do for upgrade 2 in terms of hardware, how I should record this better, if you guys like the time lapse or not, I really like hearing from your feedback because this is for YouTube. So I want it to make it good for YouTube. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug in. And the reason I'm using relays instead of automatically plugging it in to the Raspberry Pi is because I gave up on trying to figure out how to do it. I know there's probably some way, except for me this is much easier. And some of the remotes don't have a common ground, they have two grounds. So it's much harder, but on the relays each one has their own ground, so it's much, much, much easier. If you can figure out a way, great, use that. but. Until I find an easier way than this, I'm going to stick with the relays. So let's go ahead and plug in on two, which is right here. And then I plug it into this relay. So let's go ahead and plug this into the relay, the third one, like that. And then we tighten it with the screw. Uh, it's nice and tight and even if I do mess up with the wiring I can go ahead and change it later because this is so easy and no soldering is required Okay, so now let's feed the lights on and off cable, which is right here. Just put it in through here. And then we'll go back to the front and connect it up like that. Okay, so here are the lights on and off cables. Okay, now all the bottom cables are plugged in. So let's go. Oh, wait, I forgot about the ground. If 
for all of these cables. Right, so I gotta plug that in. Okay, so now I'm gonna feed in the cable for the new remote control. And go ahead and wire it up to the top riser card. And for this, I will have to put in a jumper because it, the cables do share one common ground. And now all of our relays, in terms of input wires, are plugged in. So now we can push it back. And I'm just going to fix up the cabling and I'll be back. Okay, so I cleaned up the back of the Raspberry Pi where all the cables were going in. So here's the power outlet cable. Here's this bottom cable right here is the one to the light switches. And then this cable is to the power station, and this is an extra cable for the power outlets if I ever wanted to add an outlet to this system over here. But uh, but I don't want to use those rem those outlets anymore because I'd have to take off the remote and reprogram the whole thing, so it makes much more sense to get new outlets and have more outlets on a new remote. And overall, that's how this looks i'll take a picture of a before and after which you'll be seeing right now on the screen and you'll see them again later on in the video so next we're gonna wire up the relays to the raspberry pi now i'm going to plug in the relay into the raspberry pi through the gpi opens to do that what i'm gonna do is go on my phone and go to the webio pi GPIO pinout because that's what I use for, for my home automation except I use a custom HTML that I coded myself which I will show you later because we will be upgrading the software to put in two more buttons for my Raspberry Pi so now but right now let's go ahead and connect the relay and on the Raspberry Pi we have two five volt pins and at the moment I only have one occupied so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this red cable by the way these are female to female small pin jumper cables these are the same cables I used here and so right here on the bottom of the relay I don't know if you can see but I will put in a clip showing exactly what is written here. So it says ground um, IN1, IN2. The IN stands for input, so it's input 1, input 2, input 3, input 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and VCC. VCC is the power, so this is the 5 volts and ground is ground and all the ins are GPIO pins so like for example GPIO 17 and then right here is v VOC JD VCC um, I don't know exactly what this means if you do let me know in the comments below just so I know but down here on the first card it has a little jumper right there and this new card, it didn't come with one of those jumpers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these yellow cables after I wire up all the pins. I'm not going to put it in now because it's kind of big. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump this with this. Just so it's evenly same thing as the first card. But right now let's go ahead and connect the VCC, which is the 5 volts. Um, first let's connect it in the Raspberry Pi 
it's kind of hard to see the Raspberry Pi part because it is kind of a weird angle and there's no better one. But I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. I have the pin out on the screen, so if you want to know where I'm plugging it in, go ahead and look at that. Okay, so now plugged in on the Raspberry Pi. And now let's plug it in on the board. Okay, so now we got the 5 volts in. Next, we're going to do the ground. And I'm going to do this in this green color. Right here. Plug that in. And now on the GPIO, I got to find an empty ground. Let's do pin 25. Okay, plugged in. Now next, we're going to plug in, straighten that out, input number one, which I'm guessing is this one right here, because it's the first one. But I don't know, I'll see later. But I do think that's how it is. And if not, we can go ahead later and I'll let you know if it's not. So let's plug in. And put one on the relay. And then let's look on our GPIOs. See which one is free. Um, pin 23 is open, which is GPIO 11. And lastly, we're going to plug in input number two. And plug that into pin 21, which is GPIO 9. Okay, so now they're all plugged in, but uh, you know me, I need to cable manage this. Okay, so the building or assembling portion of this upgrade is completed and everything is connected. What we added was another relay and another remote and cleaned it up a bit. So now let's go ahead and do a quick spin around it. It's all nice and clean. All the cables are routed good. I, I'm really happy how this turned out. Do a nice spin. Here's the back. The back is a lot less messy. It's not the best, but it's the back, so nobody's going to see it, and it looks a lot better than it was. Cable is nicely routed from the front to the back. That's the finished product. I'm really happy how this turned out, and now we're going to upgrade the software. And if you were wondering how the system looked back on the server rack, here is how it looks, and I really like it. I love how this looks. It looks so nice and neat. No cables are sticking out that bad, and it's well, well, well aligned. And this is how it looks with the cover on. So now let's go ahead and do the software upgrade. So I'm on my Mac, so that way I can SSH into my Raspberry Pi and then change the index.html file and so it looks better. Right now this is how my WebIO Pi looks like if we go into MK Smart Room and turn all that on. And this is how it looks right now. I have LEDs on, LEDs off, media center on, media center off, lights on, lights off. And this is so that way I can control all my devices and I did a custom one instead of if we go instead of the stock one they give you I used this stock one for a while until I figured out how to do my own custom one and the upgrade we're gonna be doing is we're gonna add outlets off and outlets on and that'll control all my bye bye standby outlets and we're also going to add charging station on, charging station off. 
So let's go. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Open up terminal. And SSH into my Raspberry Pi. Password. And now I'm in my Raspberry Pi. So what I did was I made a I made a directory or a folder called programming. So let's go ahead and CD programming. And if we ls, this is where I stored the index.html file. So now I'm going to sudo nano index.html. And as you can see, I have my own, and this is my whole custom index.html. And first thing we have to do is we have to webiopi set function. So we have to enter tap. Tab, tab, actually, get under it and do WebIOPI. So I forgot which pins were what, so I'm going to go ahead and take a reference to which pins. Okay, so I have to set GPIO 9 and GPIO 11, and I have to set them to out. And did I already set all the outlets? Two, four, six, eight. Eight. Yep, I already did all off. I already named it. So now I just have to state that the function of GPIO 9 and 11 is out. The reason I'm stating them as all out is because they're controlling something. If it was an input such as a temperature sensor, then it would be considered as an input. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the button equal to what it's going to be called and what function it's going to have. So all I'm simply going to do is copy this just because it's already done and paste and then just going to change this to 9 but first I'm gonna see what 9 does cuz I forgot okay so after doing a quick check I number 9 is it's right here and I checked it and it is set to off. So we're going to write charging station off. If that'll fit in the text box, we'll see later. And if not, we'll just modify it. Okay, so we set the function, we created the button, now we're going to create how the button looks. And how it, what color it's going to be when it's pressed. Here I already had the code written for how the button looks when it's pressed for the outlets on and off. So now what we're going to do is state how the buttons are going to be when the charging station buttons are pressed. This FF66FF, this is how the button looks when it's not pressed. So when it's on high and waiting for it to be pressed. I'll show you how it looks. 
see how right here the button isn't pressed and so it's this color so right here um, GPI 20 GPIO 24 9966 FF if we type in HTML color codes go to images um, I think I use this one it clearly states which colors are what and so um, let's find 966 FF Nine six nine nine six six FF. Oh, right here. And this is the cool purple. Nine nine six F nine nine six F. And here it is. Nice purple. And then the low is how the button looks when it's pressed. See, so if I hit lights on it turns red when I click it again it goes back to purple same thing with the lights off when it's not pressed it's pink when it's pressed it's red and you can customize all of this based on all of these codes right here so now let's make GPIO 9 when it's not pressed Okay, so now I, I think I'm going to change this color. I'm going to keep going with my pattern that I did. It was just a simple pattern. Uh, but I like how it looks. It looks really nice. And so we're going to continue with the... I have it light. No. I have a dark, light, light, dark, dark, light. So the next color is going to be light. And... I've chosen FFCCCC, wherever that is, I don't remember, but I've already chosen my colors. I got them in a text document right here, and so let's go ahead and change it. And then I like to keep it so all the lows are red. Okay, and that's all I have to do in changing this document. Um, now all I have to do is hit Control X to save. Yes. And then hit Enter. And then it's saved. Now I just have to stop with BioPi. Then I have to start it. So that way it's refreshed. And then in theory, if I go back to WebIOPI, I have all of my buttons, except uh, the text boxes aren't big enough. So what I'm going to do is make them bigger. So we're going to go back into here. I'm going to do sudo nano index.html and increase the size of the text boxes. Yep, I like how that looks. So now, oh, I forgot to change the color of this. The lights off. Why is there two lights off? Probably messed up something in the code. So let's go ahead and back and check it. Yep. I accidentally put the button again. I accidentally put GPIO 25. When I copied and pasted it, I put it in again. Oops, deleted that a little. And now it should look good. So now Control X, yes, enter. 
stop it and start it again hit refresh here and now it's all cleaned up so now I have all my buttons for my room I have outlets on outlets off charging station on and off even though this is backwards so I'm gonna have to go ahead yeah this is backwards and it's bothering me so I'm gonna go ahead and change that there we go and so now I have a bunch more buttons and they all fit and it looks good and so that's all I had to do for the upgrade of my Raspberry Pi what we did today was we upgraded the software on my Raspberry Pi so that way I have a new HTML layout for the web server part and as well as adding buttons also we cleaned up how the Raspberry Pi looked like and we added another relay and another remote control if you have any comments about the video like your thoughts on it what you'd like to see videos of or if you thought I could do something better or any suggestions in general if you like this video go ahead and hit that like button subscribe if you want to see more content like this with the Raspberry Pi and other DIY stuff and thank you for watching